Hello everyone and welcome to the 2023 Bath High School Airsman Invitational here at Bath Stadium. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Miles Holiday on a relatively nice afternoon here. The sun's coming out, the wind is cooling down, and we're just about ready for the 4x800 relay, Miles. Yeah, Jennifer, where else would you rather be than right here, right mm. now, watching some of the area's best runners compete today? And I get to do it with the legendary JKB, Jennifer Keep back. You talked about the temperature, 48 degrees comfort. Wind was around 6 to 10 miles an hour, so it should be a nice day to run in. Absolutely. The 4x8 is what we're getting ready to start right now. It is event one, and here's who we have running. In lane one, Ottawa Glandorf leading off with Corinne Claussen. Lane two, Bluffton's Ella Armstrong. Lane three, Elida, Kyla Danks. Lane four, St. Mary's Memorial, Lauren Jacobs. Lane five, Van Wert with Sarah Vireville. Lane six, Brian leading off with Mara Smith. Lane seven, Shawnee with Tamaya Jamai. And lane eight, Wapakoneta, Lilith lawson -Hyert. Yeah, two Lots favorites. Watson Heiser, sorry about that, Lilith. Two fa favorites, Ottawa Glandorf in lane one and uh, Brian in lane six. Ava Zimmerman will be running the anchor for Brian, a fantastic runner. Not in this race for Ottawa Glandorf is the legendary runner Alexa Fortman. But don't count Ottawa Glendorf out. As we saw just a few days ago in Salina, they have a lot of depth on their team. Yeah, Olivia Fenbert, the second leg of this, she is a fantastic runner as well. Runners are making their way around the third curve. We have quite a group of teams here today. Bath, Allen East, Bluffton, Bryan, Elida, Kenton, LCC, Ottawa Glandorf, Shawnee, Paulding, St. Mary's, Van Wert, and Wapak for the 46th Annual Airsman Memorial Track and Field Invitational. Now, track coaches, if you're watching this, take a look at the shoes on Ottawa Glandorf. That's exactly what we want you to run in if we're going to broadcast. Look how easy it <laughs> is to see. Absolutely. Neon flying down the track. That's true. And that Neon is right now in first place, Ottawa Glandorf with that lead there as these ladies make their way around to the second lap of their first leg of the 800. Yeah, Corin Claussen off to a good start for Ottawa Glandorf, extending that lead. I believe that's Brian in second place right now, Jen. I see you've got your binoculars here, Miles, even though you, uh, you don't have them out yet. Trying to use the old eyes first and foremost. That's right, See Brian, and I believe that might be Shawnee right there in third place. That's yeah, Mara Smith for Brian hanging out in second place, trying to push Clausen of Otto Glandor. It's got to be exciting. You first get to an event, and you don't have to wait around. You get to run the first event, get loose, get going right away. Well, and this is uh, this is definitely an event that'll get you loose. It's uh, it pushes you hard because um, we certainly know that these ladies have much more to do yet in this entire event. Almost passing off now. That's Clarin Clausen passing off to Olivia Fenbert. She is the second runner for the Ottawa Glendor four x eight. Brian's Montisa Vollmer is your next runner, and Shawnee with Emma Stolle. You'll see Vollmer in the neon pink socks, and neon making a huge comeback on the track today. <laughs> kind of that 80s look, you know, that that's move, it's, that we're seeing in a lot of trends right now, even here on the track, yeah, with yeah, the neon. That 80s look, or other known as Jennifer's Closet, right? <laughs> There's something to be said about growing up in the <laughs> 80s. I actually, now that you think about it, I think about it, Miles. My uh, high school senior, my track spikes were neon. Were they really? Yeah. What, what color neon? Well, they were white with silver and then pink and green neon on them. Uh, fantastic. I, I bet they kicked up all kind of cinder mm. on that cinder track you ran on in Iowa. That's right. Cinder track back in Iowa, but no cinder track here at Bath. Uh, you can see Otto Glandorf still with a rather commanding lead here. Brian is still in second place. Shawnee is still in third. Yeah, it's Fenbert that's doing a good job for Ottawa Glandorf. Kind of extending the lead. Your leader just made her way through. She is now into her second half of her leg of this relay. Bluffton currently in fourth, but being challenged by St. Mary's in fifth. That's a good battle between St. Mary's and Bluffton right now. That's Riley 
Uchis? Is that how you say that for Bluffton? I tell you what, Riley, if Riley Uchis, or Uchis, the, there you if go. your parents, if you're wa watching us, email me at jbeck at wtlw.com. Give me the pronunciation so that I, we can make sure we get it right for the rest of the season. And Peyton Gable for uh, St. Mary's hanging out in the same spot as well, kind of neck and neck. You can't see it quite yet, but the third runners are now making their way onto the track to get ready to accept that baton. Ottawa Glandorf's Olivia Fenbert making her way around that back curve, getting ready for her final straightaway. Looking strong as she eyes her teammate. Rose Turnwald is going to be the next one to take the baton for Ottawa Glandorf. Yeah, Fenbert, mid-season form, did not slow down at all. Ottawa Glandorf is off and running. They continue to be in first place. Brian getting ready to pass off to Ava Lambert. That will be your third runner. They are currently in second place. And Shawnee's Jenna Stump will be the third runner. St. Mary's has now overtaken the fourth place spot. Lauren Schlomer getting ready to take the baton. And Allison Diller from Bluffton is your third runner for them, and they are currently in fifth. Yeah, Jennifer, watch Rose Turnwald on the back stretch, just taking off, got the baton, and she has flown ever since she got it. She is one determined runner early on her first lap around. Really impressive stride there on the, on the back straightaway, which of course is where they want to take advantage of those long legs and be able to get that stride. Yeah, she, you can tell she's worked a lot on developing a longer stride. Not a natural gate, but she is keeping it going. There was Turnwald now on the straightaway as she is getting ready for the second half of her part of the race. Ottawa Glandor still with a commanding lead here in this first event of the relays. Turnwald has extended the lead to make this a no doubt about it. That's right. That's right. Otto Glandorf making a statement right here from the beginning as we start this event. Brian in second, Shawnee in third, St. Mary's in fourth, Bluffton in fifth. Ava Lambert doing all she can to stay within a shouting distance of Otto Glandorf for Brian. And their anchor, Ava Zimmerman, a tremendous runner, but it might be just too much for her to overcome. Ottawa Glandorf actually uh, passing, lapping a runner now as, you know, Miles Rose Turnwald has not slowed down. She has kept up that stride the whole time. Well, exactly the same thing with Olivia Fenbert, right? Fenbert did a great mm -hmm. job, extended the lead, and, and Turnwald has extended the lead even further. A very impressive first race today by Ottawa Glandorf. Madeline Hovis now stepping up into the first lane, getting ready to accept the baton from Rose Turnwald as Ottawa Glandorf's anchor is off and running, the fourth runner in this event. Hovis <laughs> flying as well. <laughs> Must be a signature of all the runners at Ottawa Glandorf. Hit the gas right away. Ava Zimmerman from Bryan is getting ready to take the baton. Take a look at Shawnee. They have, they have gained some ground there. That's Elena Williams taking off as the anchor for Shawnee. Bluffton's Allison Diller has now taken over the fourth place spot. She is passing off to June Essinger. June, a seasoned cross country runner, a great distance runner. And then St. Mary's, who is in fifth with Madeline Motter. Yeah, got to give credit to Jenna Stump for Shawnee. Did a great job of narrowing that distance between second and third, and Shawnee now has a chance to catch Brian. And that is, uh, they are gaining ground in a hurry for that second spot. And of course, what you're probably seeing on your camera or your TV at home would be Otto Glandorf with a very strong lead right here. And what Miles said is exactly right. Shawnee is right now on the curve, taking over the spot into the second place spot over Brian. Boy, look at Williams go, taking that second spot away from Brian. Jen, she has come from about 20 yards back to about 10 yards in front now. 
Yeah, quite impressive there. As you at home continue to watch Ottawa Glandorf, almost, not quite, but almost half a track lead at the moment over the rest of the field. Ottawa Glandorf in first place, very impressive, very strong run. Shawnee now in second place, increasing that lead. Elena Williams picking it up here on that second half of her run and just running away from Brian. Yeah, Ava Zimmerman, She's going to make a push to recapture second place for Brian. She's going to have to do it on this straightaway right here. Let's see if Williams has spent herself a little bit too early in this race, but Williams impressive to get second place for Shawnee right now, but even more impressive, the gals from Ottawa Glendorf <laughs> winning this, and no doubt about it. I do wish that we had a finished time clock so we'd have some idea where we are. Of course, by the time you watch this, you can go on Bomb's page and you can see what the time, finish times were. They came with a 10.30.9. Mullen Hovis looking a little red in the face there. She's pushed hard. She's done quite well, and she is taking her team to a first-place finish in the 4 by 8 Nice run by Hovis to finish it up, but the foursome from Ottawa Glendorf. Living up to the mascot name of Titans. They were there Titans we on the track. Shawnee's Elena Williams now moving her way in. Hey, look, Miles, she's got the she's got the neon shoes too. Easy to see. There we go. All right. Shawnee finishing in second place in event one, the girls four by eight. Here comes Brian's Ava Zimmerman. She will lead her team into a third place finish here at the Bath High School Airsman Invitational. A great job by Shawnee, Shawnee Stump and then Williams to go ahead and grab second place. There's June Essinger from Bluffton. They will finish in fourth place in this event. And coming in fifth place, St. Mary's. That's Madeline Motter as the anchor there. Time now for event number two. It's the boys four by 800 meter relay in lane one, Lima Central Catholic. Lane two, Wapakoneta. Lane three, Bluffton. Lane four, Van Wert. Lane five, Elida. Lane six, Shawnee. Lane seven, Paulding. Lane eight, Bath. And lane nine, Ottawa Glandorf. Now lane three, Bluffton comes in with the best time at 835. There's a name on that group that we know quite a bit, Eric Nygaard. We've that's, seen him several right. times. Uh, Bath uh, with the second best time, 843. They're hanging out in uh, lane eight. Should be a real competitive race. Of course, we know Bath had a cross country team that made it to state. Bluffton had a cross country team that made it to state. And a lot of times when your cross country runners transition into track, you see them here in the 800. Yeah, distance runners love distance, don't they? Ah, they do, they do. And I was a distance runner, so I can say we're a little unique in our thinking skills. That's a positive to all you out there. I have been a distance runner, but we are unique. <laughs> they are a different uh, bird, but it's a good thing, right? A lot of guys get to go out there and just kind of clear the mind and concentrate. Looks like your lead runner at the moment, that's is that Van Wert that I see in there, Ryland Miller. They come in with a 907.30, not the fastest, but obviously their leadoff has a plan. Sam Durstein of Bluffton is in second place. And I think that's OG, Mason Vogt in third. Yeah, top four teams kind of separating themselves on that first lap. Bath kind of hanging out in fifth place right here. Of course, when it's your own invitational, you want to show <laughs> that you're a really good team as well. That's right. Great job so far by Ryan Shadowald running this, running this meet, and it's turning into a beautiful day. The sunshine is coming out. The wind is not, well, the wind is there, but the wind is not oppressive. Uh, it's nice to see that big bright thing in the sky. <laughs> That's right. I agree with you. I hope we have, have it quite a bit more. I think many people would be happy for that. Well, watch this as these guys are making the way around, and it looks like OG is trying to make a move, still in third place, but look at Mason Vogt coming on the straightaway. He wants to hand that off in first place, and he's going to do that, handing off to Isaac Mackey. Bluffton in second place, and that's Eric Nygaard who took the baton. A great exchange, and uh, Mackey extends the lead on a clean exchange by OG. You gotta give a lot of credit to Vote. Mason had a plan, and he executed extremely well on that first leg. Ottawa Glandorf increasing the lead here back here on the straightaway. They do come in with an 856.30 is their seed time coming in. Not the fastest seed time. Bluffton comes in with an 835. Bath coming in with an 843. Early in the season, though, so a lot of things could happen. Well, one thing that is for certain, though, you said one thing that can happen is the speed of Ottawa Glandorf <laughs> early in this meet. 
First it was the ladies, now the gentlemen stepping forward. That's right, the Salina Invitational, which we broadcast just a few days ago. OG boys and girls both won the 4 by 8 Making their way to the second half. It's still OG first. It's still Bluffton second. Uh, I think that was uh, Van Wert. Does that Shawnee? Van Wert. It gets confusing when you got the red and black on both schools. That's right. Miles, Miles has his uh, binoculars out. You, you get to watch this from the zoomed-in camera view that Jacob O'Neill has going. We are way up here in the press box, so the guys are looking a little bit smaller for us. But we do know for sure that's OG in first place. That's Bluffton in second place. Jen, I believe that's Van Wert in third place, and now uh, Bluffton in fourth place, and I believe Bath in fifth place. Actually, Bluffton's in second place. Oh, there so you go. So we've got Shawnee in fourth place right now. <laughs> Thank you. OG in first, Bluffton in second. OG handing off to Cooper Fisher. Bluffton getting ready to hand off to Landon Novak. One of Bluffton's uh, key runners, Landon Armstrong, actually broke his foot during swimming season and hasn't yet been able to uh, recover well enough to be able to really be uh, back on the track and field. But not an injury you hear a great deal about in swimming, is it? I don't think it was a swimming injury, if I remember correctly. I think it was potentially a something else injury that happened around the same time. Oh, take a look at OG's Cooper Fisher. Look at him on that backstretch. We talked about this in the girls, girls race, how that, that third runner just took off, and we're seeing that again with the guys. Yeah, OG currently 4-5-4 four, four, four with their time flying around this track. And Fisher is fishing for a good time for OG. <laughs> OG continues to be your leader. Bluffton continues to be in second place. I don't know if our microphones picked it up, but you hear a lot of coaches come over to the side and tell the runners exactly what their lap time was. OG running back and forth, screaming encouragement to his runners. Well, that's really important, too. As a runner, you want to hear that. You want to know where you are. It gives you an idea of when to, when to surge, when to not, how actually you're doing, what, what you want to improve on, or if you can coast a little bit even. Not that they want to coast, but it helps them know exactly what's going on. Otto Glandorf is getting ready to hand off to Ty Rosengarten. He's going to be their anchor, as you can see. Their third runner making his way around the third curve. We're, yeah. we're getting to the point where we've got some lapping going on, so we have to carefully make sure we know who's in what place. A good point by you, Jen, when you said you want to know what the times are because you know, you're always working towards that PR, right? That's right. That's always right. want to capture the PR and then peak at the right time right around the end of the season for the district and regional and then the, hopefully the state meet. All right, Audwick Glandorf handing off now to their fourth runner. And he is off and going, Ty Rosengarten. He's got the neon pink shoes. You know, last year I was giving hair awards to everybody because we had quite a few people with large shoes. Maybe this year it's going to be the shoe awards that we're going to be uh, verbally uh, handing out here in our broadcasts. Boy, look at Ty go, though. Uh, Ty Rosengarten is just flying. Jen, look at those strides. Wow. As a young man, has worked a great deal on those strides. Fantastic form. It's incredible, really, to watch, watch this right now because he, he looks like he's sprinting. It does. And he's still going to have another lap to go. That's the interesting thing about the 800 is it is not a sprint, but yet anymore it's close to a sprint. There's no doubt about it. You have to be in phenomenal shape to run that fast twice around the track. <laughs> Eden Antrim of Bluffton has his team in a safe second place position. Third place is Van Wert, and that's Gage Springer. Okay, Miles, I've got to point it out. He's got the pink shoes, too. He's got the pink shoes, and uh, how about the headband, too? I go. like it. All right. Flowing in the air behind him. That's a fantastic look. Ty Rosengarten 
increasing his lead here on the back stretch, still with a strong stride, making his way toward the third turn. He slowed down, slowed down just a little bit from his first lap, but still an impressive run. It'll be interesting to see what OG comes in at uh, 8.11 right now as he's making the turn. Well, of course, this is just the beginning of the meet, so he, like everybody else, has a lot more yet to do today, which includes the mile. He'll be running the mile later today um, and probably another relay or some other things. Got to look at the heat sheet to know. But he's not done, but he starts off with a first-place finish for his team. Bluffton will finish in second place here in the 4x8. Now, un unofficially, 8-2-9 for OG on the win. Nice time drop regardless because it came in with an 8.56. And we're finishing in third. Bath pushing hard, making their way in. And they come in in fourth place for the boys 4x800 meter relay. Welcome back to the 46th annual Bath High School Airsman Invitational. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Miles Holiday. We just watched the boys and girls 4x800 meter relays. OG won both of them. And now it's time for event three, the girls 100 meter hurdles. This is heat three of four. In lane one, Peyton Nagel of Van Wert. Lane two, Elizabeth Kinnear of Shawnee. Lane three, Kylie Mahaffey of Wapakoneta. Lane four, Jordan Gladden of Elida. Lane five, Cameron Pratt of Bath. Lane six, Ashley Nuss of St. Mary's. And lane seven, Caitlin Zwiebel of Wapakoneta. That's Gladden and Pratt in four and five with the best times coming in today. 18.16 and an 18.20. Jennifer, I will guarantee this, Otto Glendorf will not win this heat. There's not an Otto <laughs> Glendorf runner in this one. You're right. Ottawa Glendorf will not win this heat, but we do have Ottawa, two Ottawa Glendorf runners who will be in the fastest mm -hmm. heat, there you who go. will be coming up next. We also have Temple Christian Cece Worsham, who will be coming up. She was a state qualifier, state finalist, uh, place, placer at state last year. So important early in the year on hurdles that you are stretched out, warmed up, and ready to go. That felt like a long hold, but maybe that was just me really waiting for that to get started. On the outside lane, is that Caitlin Zwiebel from Wapakoneta in the lead? Yeah, Zwiebel, a little bit of a stumble there on the hurdle, but maintaining the lead. And we've got Miles over here with his, uh, I call it his unofficial time. He says he is 17, 17, 45 is what we have unofficially for Caitlin Zwiebel. If that is the case, she should be pretty happy since she came in with an 18.8 .8 as her seed time. Had a fantastic first four hurdles. Stumbled a little bit like you do early in the year, right? You gotta get your strides down. Still she had, working on had that. had the street three step going, was changing legs every single, every single hurdle there. All right, heat four of four here in the girls 100 meter hurdles. This is your fastest heat, and here's who we have running. In lane one, Rachel F Firewood of Bl Bryan. Lane two, Aubrey Burkholder of Bluffton. Lane three, Avery Smith of Kenton. Lane four, Cece Worsham of Temple Christian. Lane five, Madeline Leibricht of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane six, Clara Beach of Ottawa Glandorf. And lane seven, McKenna O'Keefe of Bath. Yeah, Jennifer, looking at the times, unbelievable the difference between Cece Worsham from Temple Christian, 15.43, <laughs> absolutely flying. She is head and shoulders above everybody else. She did incredibly well at the indoor state meet. I cannot remember exactly where her place finish was, but I know she was on the podium at that indoor state meet for the hurdles. It'll be interesting to see if the time is not so staggered 
like in the uh, last heat that we had. There's a long pause. Now we've already got Cece Worsham ahead right there in the first hurdle. She was ahead and going. Boy, and you talk at, about smooth ability right there. Go. Oh. Madeline Leibricht making her way in, unfortunately, with a stumble there. Cece Worsham, she is your winner here from Temple Christian with an unofficial time of 15.10. Check Bombs page uh, under track and this meet for the official final times. All right, coming up next is going to be the event four, the boys' 110 meter hurdles. Event four, the boys 110 meter hurdles. This is heat three, or heat two rather, of three. In lane two, Nicholas Hunter of Wapakoneta. Lane three, Shandon Smith of Elida. Lane four, Caleb Hopkins of Allen East. Lane five, Landon Vreeland of Bath. And lane six, Anthony Tamuziski of Bryan. And I think I messed up that last name, Miles. That's Hopkins in the middle right there with the lead. Can he hold off? The Bath runner. Hopkins from Allen East in heat two of three. Our unofficial time. Did you get one? Did not. 17.85. 17.85 is our unofficial time, and that is heat two of three. And now for the fastest heat, heat three of three in the boys' 110 meter hurdles. Lane one, Kyle Basil of Bluffton. Lane two, Jaden Oliver of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane three, Carson Engel of St. Mary's. Lane four, Ethan Cole of Bath. Lane five, Dane Dooling of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane six, Carson Cruzy of Bluffton. And lane seven, Ethan Isert of Wapakoneta. That's yeah, Ethan Cole of Bath with the best time. He's your favorite. Dane Dooling, though, looks to challenge him from Ottawa Glandorf. Ethan Cole with a 16.20 time. And he is in lane four, and he and OG also, though. That's oh, wait, before I could speak, he just took off and was going. Ethan Cole of Bath. And he gets it. He's going to be your winner here in the boys' 110 meter hurdles. Yeah, had a little bit of trouble with a couple of hurdles, but didn't really affect his stride. Unofficially, 15.95. And we'll be back right after this with the girls' 100-meter dash. You're watching the 46th Annual Ayersman Memorial Track and Field Invitational here at Bath Stadium. This is event number five, the girls' 100-meter dash, and we are getting ready for heat three of four. In lane one, it's Denisha Branson of Van Wert. Lane two, Kennedy Clay of Elida. Lane three, Delaney Dooling of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane four, Paige Olberding of Wapakoneta. Lane five, Riley Slugawiski of Wapakoneta. Lane six, Amelia Anchorman of St. Mary's. And lane seven, Alanini Bagley of Lima Central Catholic. Yeah, four and five, a battle between uh, Wapakoneta greats. Keep an eye on four and five. 13 5 0 and 13 7 0. Then Delaney Dooling in lane three from Ottawa Glandorf. Looks to be pushing those top two, but a little battle between Wapa Kaneta favorites. And Jen, one of my favorite races because you just look and you run fast. <laughs> Get there as fast as you can. That's right. The start is so important. Getting out of the blocks is important. The way you even put your head and your body movement, all of those things are key aspects to this 100 meter dash. Yeah, you want to make sure that you stay low. Don't expose your chest too early. Get yourself out of a good start out of the blocks and let your body take care of the rest. Always interesting to see who's a hopper and who's a a tapper with their feet. You know, you've got to stay <laughs> loose. Some some ladies like to jump up and down. Others just kind of like to run in place. All the mental games that you got to go through to get yourself in the right spot. That's Denisha Branson from Van Wert in lane one. You see she's a little bit of a hopper, getting herself ready to go. Shake those legs out. Does it 
looks like we do not have anybody in seven. Bagley of Lima Central Catholic, I don't see anybody there in the blocks. Ghost runner in lane seven. It is one through six is who we have, and it is two Wapakonetas and Van Wert. Van Wert in one and Wapak in four. And I think that's lane four, Wapakoneta. Paige Olberding is the winner of this heat. Yeah, Olberding unofficially 13.02 uh, to get the win, but uh, Dinesha Branson from Van Wert, tremendous in lane one. I guess being a hopper is better than being a shaker. She did a good job getting herself ready to go. Heat four of four in the girls' 100-meter dash in lane one at Savannah Wrecker of Ottawa Glendorf. Lane two, Kendra Deering of Van Wert. Lane three, Tatum Walsh of Bath. Lane four, Olivia Stolle of Lima Central Catholic. Lane five, Yolanda Schenkel of Bryan. Lane six, Emma Macon of Elida. Lane seven, Chloe Spicek of Bryan. And we had a false start. I'm assuming that's what we had. I was looking my down reading, but I heard the double gun. Yeah, double gun indicates a false start, and they're going to redo it. You know, so important early in the year that you get your starts down so you don't have that issue moving on to the se in the season. Keep an eye on Walsh, Stoli, Schinkel, and Mackin. Those are your top four. Their times are virtually a lock on each other. Whoever gets off to a great start, Jen, I think is going to win this. Mack in, in lane six, the last one to get set, ready to go. So we have lanes one, three, four, five, six, and seven. And right now it's Elida, making from Elida. <gasps> but that was close at the end. Bath and Brian both coming in with the surge at the last moment. Might have been a photo finish. Uh -huh. It was Mackin that had the lead, but was she? Did she have enough to hold it off? And that is the girls' 100 meter dash with an unofficial win time of 12.37. Heat three of four in the boys' 100 meter dash. Lane one, Noah Bricker of Bluffton. Lane two, Alex Arellano of Lima Central Catholic. Lane three, Dalton Woodruff of Bath. Lane four, Jacob Hirschberger of Allen East. Lane five, Bryce Williams of Lima Central Catholic. Lane six, Jackson Freisner of Allen East. And lane seven, Crew Allen of Wapakoneta. Well, they had it correct putting Hirschberger in lane four because he absolutely flew. He was challenged by his uh, teammate, Jackson Freisner. And they're going to be one and two, Jen. That's right. That's heat three of four in this boys' 100 meter dash. Heat four of four in the boys' 100-meter dash. In lane one, it's Dalen Heil of Elida. Lane two, Colton Hobson of Shawnee. Lane three, Carson Frost of Shawnee. Lane four, Ryland Garza of Bryan. Lane five, Jager Burgai of Ottawa Glendorf. Six, Kyron Johnson of Bath. Seven, Colby Quay of Kenton. Ooh, that was a close finish. Lane two and lane six. Hard for us to tell from our area who won, but that was... Uh... It looked like Johnson in lane six. Had it until about the last uh, four yards. Didn't know if he had enough to hold off, but wow. The top four runners, absolutely incredible how competitive that race was. That's right, that's the boys' 100 meter dash. We want to remind you that it's time to spring to life with WOSN and TV44. Our annual spring to life funding campaign is underway now. Please partner with us by giving us a financial donation in any amount. Our campaign goal is $50,000 by Mother's Day. Donate online at WTLW.com forward slash donate. We will be right back with the relays. Welcome back to the Bath High School Airsman Invitational. You're watching it on viewer-supported WOSN. Donate today at WTLW.com forward slash donate. Event number seven, the girls 4 by 200 meter relay. This is heat two of two in lane one, Paulding. Lane two, Bluffton. Lane three, Ottawa Glendorf. Lane four, Van Wert. Lane five, Brian. Lane six, Bath. And lane seven, Shawnee. Yeah, Van Wert with your best time, 147.44. Denisha Branson, who we just saw a little bit ago, going to lead it off for them. And of course, Ottawa Glandorf, the second best time. If they're close, keep an eye on Alexa Fortman. She'll be running the anchor for them. Two fantastic teams ready to battle it out. 
You know, we've been commenting, Miles, that it seems like it's getting a little bit colder here. And I see the girls, uh, they are trying to keep, them, keep themselves warm. Uh, sun is under the clouds, and the temperatures feel like they're dropping. Yeah, it's been my experience in life, Jennifer, that when the sun goes <laughs> down, the temperatures do drop. It's going to be hot on the track, though. That it, won't stop the fast running. It is a, such an unusual sport, isn't it? You start out in winter and you end in summer. <laughs> so much can happen in just a matter of a few weeks. These girls are off and going. Michaela Carr from Paulding in one. Jordan Weinbruber of Bluffton in two. Savannah Recker of OG in three. Denisha Branson of Van Wert in four. Rachel Firevoid of and Brian in five. Cameron Pratt of Bath in six. And Raven James of Shawnee in seven. Getting ready to hand off to the second runners. And based on the handoff, I would say that our leader right now is Van Wert. That's Macy Johnson for Van Wert extending the lead. Bath in second place. And that's uh, Carly Wallace trying to hold off Bluffton. Van Wert has handed off to Kendra Deering for their third runner. They are running away right now with the first place spot. OG is looking strong right there in lane three with Avery Fox. Yeah, it looks like Van Wert made a little switch in their lineup. Sometimes uh, coaches will ch pick and choose who's going to lead it off and who's going to run the third and fourth leg. Sophie Haug just took the... Uh, the baton for Van Wert. Alexa Fortman now has the baton for Ottawa Glandorf. Oh, and uh, Sophie is moving and Alexa is chasing. Yeah, the Terminator loves to chase down the competition. We've seen her do it at the state level. Can Fortman catch Haug? It's gonna be Haug, she's gonna take her team in. Van Wert with the winning four by two. Ottawa Glendorf second. Brian is third. And Bath is fourth. Our unofficial time is 147.39. That's our hand clock up here in the press box. The boys four by 200 meter relay. Heat two of two. Lane one, St. Mary's leading off with Kevin Perry. Lane two, Lima Central Catholic, Bryce Williams. Lane three, Allen East, Jacob Hirschberger is the lead off. Lane four, Shawnee Colton Hobson. Lane five, Bath with Kyron Johnson. Lane six, Brian Ryland Garza. And lane seven, Bluffton leading off with Hayden Durth. Uh, Jen, uh, Shawnee and Bath, virtual same times coming into this. Lanes four and five, watch how they start. Uh, Bath with uh, Kyron Johnson, he is a fantastic runner we saw earlier. Gets them off to a good start. They've got a great chance, but don't count out Alan East. We know Jacob Hirschberger can fly. He's running first for them. And yeah, I would say he is flying as we watch Jacob Hirschberger make his way around the track in lane three. Of course, watch the handoffs. Everybody's staggered, and that's where you figure out where we actually are by who is getting that handoff first. A good exchange for Johnson and Hale from Bath. Hale looks like he's going to take the first place spot for Bath as they make the turn here. Yeah, he is barreling his way down the straightaway here, getting ready to hand off to Dalton Woodruff from Bath. Again, watch those handoffs. Allen East, looks like they are your leader right now based off the handoff. Third runner is Eisen Schaefer. Bass struggled a little bit between Hale and Woodruff on that blind exchange, and that's allowed Allen East to sneak ahead. Allen East coming in with a 136.03, so they're actually the third fastest time based off seed, but like you had said, it's very close, very close between several of these teams. Allen East is anchoring with Trey Hensley, and he does not want anyone to catch him. Yeah, Allen East, their exchanges have been near flawless, and that's allowed them to steal this one. Look at Hensley. It's going to be a race flying. for... Well, Shawnee is in second. Allen East is in first. Hensley's going to finish that finish line first. Second place going to 
Let's see. It's a one a unofficial 132.56. Again, that is just us up here in the in the press box. That's our own unofficial time. Check Bomb's page for your official times. If you probably have all that information by now. That's the boys four by 200 meter relay. Your winner is Alan East. We'll be back when we move to the distance events. Coming up next, you are watching the 2023 Bath High School Airsman Invitational right here on WOSN. All right, we're joining in progress with the girls' 1600 meter run. Originally, we're gonna do this in two heats. They've decided to make it into one heat, and here's who we have running in this race. We got Jacob jumping up here on the camera right now, and he is getting us updated on our leader right there. Here's your racers in this event. Bailey Block of Elida, Isabel Carmen of Allen East, Claire Miller of Paulding, Adriana Carwile of Paulding, Madeline Motter of St. Mary's, Elliot Hammonds of Kenton, Mariel Augsburger of Wapakoneta, Kyla Faust of Bath, Amari Painter of Bluffton, Kaya Heinbaugh of Allen East, Braylon Burke of Van Wert, Ashley Elkins of Wapakoneta, Emily Morrissey of LCC, Emily Durham of Elida, Jenna Stump of Shawnee, Mara Smith of Bryan, Annie Manns of Kenton, Molly Stump of Shawnee, Rose Turnwald of Oliver Glandorf, Ella Armstrong of Bluffton, Allison Brostrom of Bath, Peyton Gable of St. Mary's, Kate Thormeyer of Bryan, Madeline Hofus of Ottawa Glanorf, and Kyra Welch of Van Wert. And it looks like our leader right now is from Bryan, I believe. That is uh, Kate Thormeyer from Bryan out in front. And uh, I think we should get Jacob O'Neill in this race, uh, our <laughs> camera guy. Jacob, tremendous job. Uh, Jacob was all the way down changing the battery when they announced that this was going to be one heat instead of two. And he flew, absolutely flew up the stairs, got up here. Great job by Jacob. Set a record time, I think, Jen. Yeah, that's right. Good job, Jacob O'Neill. Good job to our runners out there. It looks like Shawnee is challenging right now. The Shawnee runner, Molly Stomp, a very well-known cross-country runner and long-distance runner. Two runners have paced the way as your leader, and then we've got a pack for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh places. Well, you have to be a smart, uh, judicious runner with your start to this race because 25 ladies involved, you were expecting to be in a heat of 12 or 13, your strategy changes with so many bodies. Yes, they did have a lot of runners starting up. They are starting to pace their way out right now as uh, these ladies make their way around. Still, our leader is from Brian with second place, Shawnee. You know, top two runners, a sizable lead. Halfway through the race, looks like it's a two-lady race to be won, and it's still Thormeyer out in front. While we're watching these ladies run, I'll read a few uh, results for you that have happened earlier in this meet. In the girls' pole vault, it's Ottawa Glandorf's Lily Hazelman. She was the winner with a nine-foot clearance. Second place, Callie Cotter from Bluffton. In the boys' shot put, first place finisher, Ias Richardson of Shawnee, throwing 49.08.5. Second place, Shandon Sewell, also of Shawnee, throwing 49.06.25. In the girls, um, in the girls' 100-meter dash, your winner is Emma Macon of Elida, 12.90. Second place, Yolanda Schenkel of Bryan, 12.95. It looks like Stump might be making her move now as they make the turn on the straightaway. She has closed it within one or two steps. Of course, the straightaway is where you want to make that move if you can, so you don't have to run quite so much. Brian Runner, though, still holding her off as they get ready for their final lap. Tell everybody thinks about the mile being so long, but here we are, final lap already. It actually goes pretty quickly. Well, as fast as they run, it, <laughs> it really doesn't take too much time. Thurmeyer felt Stump breathing down her neck and extended it back to more than a couple strides. This is going to be a fun race on this last lap. That's right. Both the ladies with their neon shoes making their way around the curve, getting ready for this straightaway as we see who's got the uh, endurance and the power in this back straightaway part. Now, Jen, yeah, you ran a little bit of distance. Would you, in this position of the race, would you rather be in the front setting the pace or, 
or in second where you're just kind of coasting? Well, at this point, these ladies really got to be thinking about what they want to do because they are about to the end of their race. So it's time to kick it in. What they have left is time to kick it in. And we are seeing that happen right now with, uh, with the Brian runner. She is kicking it in and increasing her lead just a tiny bit. We're going to see what Shawnee's Molly Stump still has back in back in this last last hundred meters. Yeah, good job by both runners navigating some of the other runners that they're having to lap. Oh, take a look at what's happening here. You can see it on Molly's face, pushing hard. Both ladies sprinting as hard as they can. And in the last seconds, Shawnee takes it and wins this 1600 meter run. Watching now as the second and third place finishers come in. It's a tough race, Miles. You know, <laughs> these ladies, they, they push and push and push for four straight laps. Oh, watch out that Otto Glendorf lady. Okay, good. We've got so, we have so many runners here. We've got runners finishing, and we still have runners that are still running. Now, it's funny that you said it's such a tough race, and almost on cue, both runners collapse to the ground. It is a physically taxing race. You're sprinting for four laps. So tough, so unnatural to do. You have to overcome that fatigue. Jumping right into event 10, it's the boys 1600 meter run. Originally was going to be broken into two heats. They've decided to make it into one. So we got 26 runners here. And here is our contestants. Cosimo de Toya of Lima Central Catholic. Keaton Lehman of Allen East. Landon Bullenbacher of Elida. Brady Shea of Allen East. Jackson Blue of Kenton. Brandon Fry of Ottawa Glandorf. Michael Miller of LCC. Carson Frost of Shawnee. Garrett Beamer of Elida. Coley Thompson of Paulding. Eli Jones of Paulding. Thomas Cover of Shawnee. And Braden Buchanan of Bryan. Eric Nygaard of Bluffton. Owen Scott of Van Wert, Tony Faust of Bryan, Axton Fosna of Wapakoneta, Drew Laudick of Van Wert, Ethan Rawl, Kenton, Ty Rosengarten, Ottawa Glandorf, Cash Shadel, Wapakoneta, Eden Antrim of Bluffton, Michael Kreitz of St. Mary's, Jacob Weyerman of Bath, Tyler Burt of St. Mary's, and Landon Jones of Bath. Nice job by you, Jen, getting all those names yeah. done. Huge field, so important that you don't get blocked out early. Set the pace if you're one of the leaders. Top times, Ty Rosengarten of Otto Glandor, 438.01. And Aiden Antrim of Bluffton, 440. Those guys got to get out and set the pace so they don't get uh, caught in the wash. You got to really navigate bodies early in this field. When you mentioned something too, this was going to be two heats. It's now one heat. We've doubled the number of guys that are going to start out. Of course, they're only going to be in groups until they get to that certain curve where they can actually go. But they've got that first part where they got to battle around with a bunch of other runners. I would try to stay in a group as long as possible because I want to stay warm. <laughs> you want to stay warm? There we go. Well, Ty Rosengarten did not listen to you on that one because he is out front already, running way out there in one of the outer lanes. Not exactly what uh, these runners love to do, but he is out there setting the pace and makes his way over to lane one first right away. But then we've got some Bluffton runners uh, right there behind him. Yeah, smart strategy. Came around the second turn right away to get inside so you can block off some other runners. Usually on this first lap, you're going to see a difference between the top four or five runners and the rest of the field. Rounding past that curve into the straightaway, Ty Rosengarten continues to be your leader here, your second place runner at the moment. That's from Van Wert. That's Owen Scott and your third place runner right now, Tyler Burt from St. Mary's. Yeah, Owen Scott going with the shades on this second lap. His future so bright, he has to wear shades. <laughs> so, Miles, as I look at the field here, I think I may only see one Bluffton runner. And I think I, think I see Eric Nygaard, but perhaps we don't have Eden Antrim running. Of course, I am, like I've said to you before, I'm looking way up from the press box, so it's a pretty far away. We know we've got OG first, we have Van Wert second, and we have St. Mary's third right now. And I believe that's the signature sunglasses that we usually see Eric Nygaard running as he moves his way into the fourth place spot. I believe that's Tyler Burt for St. Mary's 
in the third spot, running one and two. And moving into second place now is St. Mary's. But you gotta really like the start for Ottawa Glandorf and Rosengarten. Yeah, he is strong here as he's halfway through his race right now. St. Mary's second, Van Wert third. Bluffton is fourth at the moment. Can give you a few results here as we uh, continue to watch these runners run in the girls' long jump. Your first place finish was Olivia Stolle from LCC with a jump of 608.75. Correction, looks to me like C yes, C that is correct. Olivia Stolle, first place, LCC 16.875. CC Worship of Temple Christian second with 16.725. Kaylee Kohler of Wapakoneta third and Savannah Recker of Ottawa Glandorf fourth. In the girls' discus throw from OG with a throw of 127, Emma Hoffman. Second place, Tatum Miller of Kenton, 114.4. Third place, Haley Ellerbrock of OG, 107.7. And fourth place, Rory Youngpeter of Bluffton, 104.5. Had a change in the third place, Jen, but is still Rosengarten out in front. St. Mary's second, but take a look at Bluffton. He is now closing in on second place. That's Eric Nygaard. On to the last lap at 3.33 for Rosengarten. I think we may start to see some lead changes. We're already seeing them right here as we watch some of these guys really push this in in the last seat. Ty Rosengarten, he's just extending his lead. But Bluffton's Eric Nygaard has now moved into second place. Interesting to watch how he ran. He started out in the fourth place spot when he moved over into that lane after the, the first curve. He is now in second place. St. Mary's in third. Bath on the curve is moving his way into fourth. You wonder if Nygaard was uh, part of a strategy or just got blocked out early in this race, but he has uh, ran a fantastic second and third lap. All right, you are watching Ty Rosengarten as he makes his way around. What you're not seeing is on that back straightaway. We still have Bluffton in second place, but St. Mary's is right on his heels. Yeah, Nygaard might have enough to hold <laughs> off and, and keep second, but it's going to be Rosengarten, his race to win. 431 as he is heading towards the finish line. Looking strong, Ty Rosengarten making his way into the finish, and he is your winner. But what a finish here. Bath moving into second, Wapakoneta third, Bluffton fourth, another Bath runner trying to make his way into fifth place. Big finishes, wow, for, for the uh, finish here in the boys' 1600. Yeah, 441 for first place and 450 for second place there. This is the boys' 1,600-meter run. 26, well, 25 runners have made their way through. Tough four miles, or four miles, not four miles, miles, four laps for one mile in the boys' 1,600-meter run. All right, hold on, everyone. Don't go away, because when we return, it's back to the sprints with the girls' 4 by 100 meter relay. You're watching the 46th Annual Arizmen Memorial Track and Field Invitational at Bath Stadium right here on WOSN. And we are back. You are watching the 46th Annual Airsman Memorial Track and Field Invitational at Bath Stadium. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Miles Holiday, Jacob O'Neill on camera. And it's time for the sprint relays of the girls four by 100 meter relay. We already had heat one of two. Getting ready now for heat two of two. In lane one, it'll be Shawnee leading off with Raven James. Lane two, Ottawa Glandorf. Savannah Recker is your leadoff. Lane three, Elida with Kennedy Clay. Lane four, Brian, Anna Gray. Lane five, Van Wert, Olivia Voss. Lane six, Haley Hale of Bath leads off. And in lane seven, Kaylee Kohler for Wapakoneta. Uh, Jen, your best time, Brian, a high school, a 5 one a 6 a 0 a great force. And they have the third leg, Reese Grote House one of those fantastic basketball players from that uh, Final Four team that they mm, had this year. Mm -hmm. What a great athlete she is, a uh, great tennis player as well. Now she's taking her talents to the track as well. 
And they are off and they are going. This is the four by one, which means it is just going to be quick. Less than a minute and it will be over. Watch the handoff to predict who we think is in the lead. That's a pretty close one, Miles. Bath had a great handoff. Van Wert had a great handoff. Even Wapakoneta had a tremendous exchange. Macy Johnson for Van Wert, passing off to Denisha Branson. That's a name we've already said a few times, and she is off and going. Yeah, Brian struggled a little bit on the exchange there. Van Wert's getting ready to hand off to Sophie Haug. Sophie was the anchor in the four by two. She is now the anchor in the four by one. She is in the lead, trying to chase her down as Ottawa Glendorf's Avery Fox in two and in seven, Wapakoneta, but it is Haug and Van Wert is your winner in the four by one. An unofficial time up here in the press box, around 51 seconds. Congratulations to Van Wert on winning well, the how, 4 by one How impressive was Van Wert's exchanges? I, mm. You'd argue that's why they won it. Jumping now to event 12, the boys' 4 by 100 meter relay. This is heat two of two. In lane one, it's Allen East leading off with Jackson Freisner. Lane two, Wapakoneta leading off with Ross L Lockhart. I believe that's how you pronounce that. Lane three, LCC's Bryce Williams. Lane four, Shawnee Colton Hobson. In lane five, Logan Freeman of Ottawa Glendorf. Lane six, Dalton Woodruff of Bluff Bath. And lane seven, Kevin Perry is your leadoff for St. Mary's. Yeah, Lima Central Catholic, Shawnee and Ottawa Glendorf, three, four, and five lanes. Those are your top times in it. Virtual lock on a time right there. So close. It's going to be so important on the exchanges to see who wins this one. And they are off and they are going. Just a few seconds and we will see that first exchange. Three, four, and five are your top seed times coming in, those heats rather. Looks like some clean exchanges there, and uh, Shawnee in particular, but LCC is moving ahead quite quickly. Third exchange, also clean. Wapakoneta doing a good job on the turn right here. Yeah, it looks like Wapakoneta's oh, Wapakoneta. That's right. That's Angel Coca is the is your anchor. Ottawa Glandorf, Dane Dooling is the anchor there, and it's Wapakoneta. They are your winners in this event. Yeah, Wapakoneta came in with a time of 4602. They're close to the leaders, able to steal it here. Event 13, the girls 400 meter dash. This is heat two of three. In lane one, Braylon Murphy of Shawnee. Lane two, Quinlan Spearman of Kenton. Lane three, Isabella Bartlett of Bath. Lane four, Amelia Anchorman of St. Mary's. Lane five, Addie Howdenscheid of Kenton. Lane six, Kennedy Sorrells of Elida. And lane seven, Sophie Gearhart of Van Wert. Yeah, Howdenscheid, Anchorman, and Bartlett, three, four, and five, all run one, zero, seven. Those are your two, uh, three best times in this race. And how about that? A dog's getting in the race. That's really go. cool. <laughs> you think the dog would win? <laughs> I've seen some I'd, of those races before. I'd be rooting for the dog. All right, I'm rooting for the girls here as they run this 400 race, making their way around. Your leader at the moment, Kennedy Sorrells from Elida. She's getting out strong as they make it way over to the straightaway. Yeah, Bartlett for Lima Bath also got off to a good start. As we've talked before at other events, this is pretty much a sprint anymore. You get going, you keep going, and you just try to continue going all the way around. And that last 200, especially the last 100, can be a struggle huh. as you just got to keep that endurance and speed happening at the same time. I look at Anchorman from St. Mary's made a big push right before the turn. Boy. And it's getting close now between St. Mary's and Elida. Amelia Anchorman from St. Mary's moves her way into first place in this heat, and she is your heat winner. Kennedy Sorrells for Elida ran a really good race, just didn't have enough at the end. You gotta give a hats off to Anchorman, ran a fantastic race. Heat four of four. This still is the girls' 400-meter dash. 
in the 2023 Bath High School Airsman Invitational, the 46th annual Airsman Invitational that you're watching on WOSN. Don't forget that we are viewer supported and we are a nonprofit. Our spring campaign is underway. Would you make a donation as a way of saying thank you for us broadcasting this and other track and field events this spring? Just go to WTLW.com forward slash donate or call 419-339-4444 to make your donation. Heat four of four in lane one, Jamie Hunt of Paulding. Lane two, Riley Slug Slug of Whiskey. Riley, I love your last name. I got to learn how to pronounce it better. <laughs> She's from Wapakoneta. Lane three, Olivia Fenbert, Ottawa Glandorf. Lane four, Alexa Fortman, your state champion from last year in this event, Ottawa Glandorf. Lane five, Haley Hale of Bath. Lane six, Sophie Haug of Van Wert. And lane seven, Gabby Muller of Wapakoneta. Well, you mentioned her as the state champion. That's Fortman. She has the best time. Five, eight point five one. And you see the reason why. Look at the start by Fortman, absolutely flying. Look at the pumping in her arms and the length of her stride, really just moving her way down that straightaway ahead of everyone else with a focus, with a plan. Looking right now that our second place runner, I believe that might be Sophie Haug out there in lane six from Van Wert. It is Haug out on the far distance, but it is Fortman with the lead. Jen, the thing I always enjoy about watching her is how focused she is. Mm -hmm. You'll see it as she hits this straightaway. A determined young lady, she's going to win this easily. She always tells me that she's praying during these races. She's praying, she's asking God to guide her and direct her. And we see her eyeing the end. Alexa Fortman's going to bring some more points for Ottawa Glandorf. But second place between Fenbert and Haug. And I think it was Haug there. In second place, Olivia Fenbert in third. That was a really close one, though. Um, good finish for all the ladies. Yeah, I agree with you. It was how that got it by a half step, but how impressive was Alexa Fortman on that race? Heat three of four in the boys' 400-meter dash. This is event number 14. In lane one, Freddie Bame of Van Wert. Lane two, Hayden Sell of Wapakoneta. Lane three, Alec Davis of Bluffton. Lane four, Justin Bowman of LCC. Lane five, Isaiah Judkins of Elida. Lane six, Aiden Shekelhoff of LCC. And lane seven, Hunter Nichols of Allen East. Hey, keep your eyes on lane four, Justin Bowman of CC. Best time, 5.50. Five, five, he is your favorite. Really just missed getting into that fastest final really close time that almost could have gotten him there. It looks like no runner in lane five, Jen. Also no runner in, uh, we're missing another one too? Yeah, lane six is one, empty is also. One, two, three, no one in four. We got someone five, no one in six and seven. So that means here's who we have. Van Wert in one, Wapak in two, Bluffton in three, LCC in four, and LCC or uh, Allen East in seven. We're missing f one. Yeah, we only have uh, five of our runners, which does change what we thought would be because some of those runners that we expected are not in this race. Yeah, it looks like uh, Freddie Bame now for Van Wert might be your favorite in lane one as he finishes this turn. You might hear some of his family yelling, let's go Freddie, <laughs> and he's responding. Van Wert in one is your leader, Elida in five in second place. Looks like he ran around a 55.34. Again, that's our that's our time up here, our handheld time up here in the press box. He is your winner in heat three of four. Heat four of four, the boys' 400-meter dash. Our previous heat, we were off on some of those names and lanes as we realized they moved some people around uh, to make up for the runners who were not there. In this event, here's who we believe we have. Isaac Mackey of Ottawa Glendorf in lane one. No one in lane two. That would have been Keaton Lenhardt of Wapakoneta. Lane three, Aiden Wood of Kenton. Lane four, Ison Schaefer of Allen East. Lane five, Colby Quay of Kenton. Lane six, Brody Devlin of Bryan. And lane seven, Sean Alexander of Shawnee. You know, one thing we do know for sure, Eisen Schaefer from Allen East, your best time uh, coming into this race, a 5-2.50.
yet another one of those great Allen East runners. Nice program that they have there. And Jen, they just turned on the lights here. Ah, is that the buzzing that we're hearing? We're hearing those lights coming on. I don't know if you could at home hear that, but that's what we're hearing. But what we are watching here, that looks like Colby Quay from Kenton. I believe he is our current leader. Yeah, Colby had one of the better times. 5-2.88 was a leader coming into this. And he's being challenged on the outside as well by Brody Devlin from Bryan. That's right. This last 200 is always where it tells the story. Who's got that speed in the end? And Bryan and Allen East are pushing it out, but it is Devlin from Bryan. Allen East Schaefer is challenging, but it looks like Bryan is going to get some more points on the board for their team. Brody Devlin from Bryan is your winner in the boys' 400-meter dash. Unofficially a 5-3.08. Good run for Brody Devlin. All right, we're going to wrap up this segment. Segment, rather, Don't go away. When we return, we're going to have the girls' 300-meter hurdles. Don't forget, you're watching Bath High School's Airsman Invitational right here on viewer-supported WOSN. Make a donation today. Visit WTLW.com forward slash donate. Any amount, 100% of your donation donation stays local and allows us to broadcast events just like this one. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with the 300 meter hurdles in just a moment. It's time to spring to life with WSN and TV 44. Our annual spring funding campaign is underway now. Partner with us by giving us a financial donation in any amount. Go to WTLW.com forward slash donate and get us closer to our $50,000 goal. Heat two of three in the girls' 300-meter hurdles. Lane one, Harper Roop of Van Wert. Lane two, Kaylin Zwiebel of Wapakoneta. Lane three, Cameron Pratt of Bath. Lane four, Aubrey Burkholder of Bluffton. Lane five, Sadie Tarpley of Bluffton. Lane six, Lauren Jacobs of St. Mary's. And lane seven, Avery Smith of Kenton. Uh, Jen, it was Pratt, Burkholder, and Tarpley with the best times, uh, virtually the same time. So this is going to be fun. As they make this turn, we're going to find out who's got enough left. And they're doing a great job of coming over top of those hurdles. You know, earlier today, you mentioned the importance of staying warm for the 100 hurdles because, you know, your body gets tight in this cold weather. Well, it's gotten colder out here. These girls are now getting closer to this last hurdle and all the energy and effort that they got to put into that to get over that. That's lane three, Cameron Pratt of Bath. Yeah, Pratt, great job. Once they hit the last straightaway, over took Zwebel to get the win. Heat three of three. Girls 300 meter hurdles. In lane one, Kylie Mahaffey, Wapakoneta. Lane two, Montessa Volmer, Brian. Lane three, Peyton Nagel of Van Wert. Lane four, she won the 100 hurdles. And here she is in the 300 hurdles. It's CeCe Worsham of Temple Christian. Lane five, Madeline Leibrick of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane six, Ashley Nuss of St. Mary's. And lane seven, Clara Beach of Ottawa Glandorf. Yeah, CeCe Worsham is so impressive. She has your best time in this one, 4975. And Jen, she is snapping over top of those hurdles. She is very smooth. She's got her stepping strong. Look and she's that. just gliding over those hurdles. So impressive. The technique is just second to none. You know, Temple Christian has never had a large track team, but they have consistently had solid track athletes, state qualifiers, and here she comes her way around. Two more hurdles to go, and no one's even close. Yeah, CeCe Worsham, absolutely dominant, elite-level stuff here today. Second place, Ottawa Glandorf. Third place, St. Mary's. Fourth place, Ottawa Glandorf. And that's how it would finish. Event 16, the boys 300 meter hurdles. This is heat two of three. In lane one, Jaden Mannon of Bryan. Lane two, Carson Engel of St. Mary's. Lane three, Ethan Isert, Wapakoneta. Lane four, Samuel Burkholder of Bath. Lane five, Anthony, I'll let you say this name. Tomaszewski. All righty, thank you, Miles. He's from Bryan. Lane six, Ethan Woodruff of Allen East. And lane seven, Hunter Winget of St. Mary's. That's yeah, Burkholder and Tomaszewski, your favorites. Uh, 46.67 and 46.76. Uh, so neck and neck. This is going to be a fun one.
somewhere behind that scoreboard. They're <laughs> getting ready to start. That's right. We are. They were there. You may not have been to see them well, but they were there, and they are off and going, getting over the hurdle first. That well, was pretty close between Allen East and Wapakoneta. Looks like a hurdle took the dive, fell apart after one of the runners hit it. Oh, you're right. That is, yeah, one of those hurdles will have to get repaired before we get to the fastest heat. And as they make their way around, only a few hurdles to go. It's lane three, and that is Ethan Isert of Wapakoneta. And Burkholder wearing the hat, trying to catch, but not going to get it done. And now time for the fastest heat in the boys' 300-meter hurdles. In lane one, Caleb Hopkins of Allen East. Lane two, Angel Coca of Wapakoneta. Lane three, Hayden Miller of Shawnee. Lane four, Dane Dooling of Ottawa Glendorf. Lane five, Carson Cruz of Bluffton. Lane six, Ethan Cole of Bath. And lane seven, Jaden Oliver of Ottawa Glendorf. Yeah, it's Dooling with the best time at 42.71. Uh, Carson Cruz in lane five from Bluffton, a uh, four, three point six zero, hoping to cruise to a victory. And Dueling, uh, really a a varying athlete. You can be a, he's a sprinter, but he's also a good hurdler. Look at him going over those hurdles with ease. Doesn't really miss a stride on his landing. Snaps over top and then keeps going. It's Dueling. And then it's Cruz from Bluffton next to him. Yeah, Dueling now extending the lead. Looks like he's gonna go ahead and snatch victory here. Oh no, we got someone falling from Bath. Second place back up there. Looks like Wapakoneta gets that second place. Bluffton third. Bath runner is making his way in, always tough when you get to the end and that hurdle gets you. All right, when we come back, it's going to be the girls' 800 meter run. 41.09 is what Miles has as the unofficial time for dueling in the 300 meter hurdles. And as I said, when we come back, we're shifting back to the middle distance. Girls' 800 meter run right here on WOSN. We are back and you are watching the 46th Annual Ayersman Memorial Track and Field Invitational right here on WOSN, a viewer supported nonprofit ministry. Thank you for your donations. Just go to WTLW.com forward slash donation. Your donation in any amount is an opportunity to, to say thank you to WOSN for broadcasting this and other track meets this season. We are watching event 17. It's the girls 800 meter run. This is heat two of two, two laps around the track. Number one, Blair Utendorf of Bluffton. Number two, Corinne Clausen of Ottawa Glendorf. Number three, Allison Brostrom of Bath. Number four, Anna Buttlemeyer of Ottawa Glendorf. Number five, Kyra Welch of Van Wert. Number six, Molly Stump of Shawnee. Number seven, Quinlan Spearman of Kenton. Number eight, Ava Zimmerman of Bryan. Number nine, Peyton Gable of St. Mary's. Number 10, Emily Morrissey of LCC. Number 11, Mara Smith of Bryan. And number 12, Jenna Stump of Shawnee. Well, Jen, uh, your top time coming in here, Corinne Clausen of Otto Glandorf, uh, 2, 28.80. Uh, she's going to be challenged by a teammate, Buttlemeyer, from Otto Glandorf. But don't sleep on Molly Stump from Shawnee. You're right. A big winner earlier tonight. Well, a beautiful setting we have here. Look at the purple and blue in the sky as these ladies work their way around this track. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. The ladies just about almost getting to the point where they're going to be able to move from their lanes over into the area. Well, not quite yet. They got a little while to go. But yeah, I guess I was too busy looking at the sky to notice exactly where they were on the track. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous backdrop here. They do such a great job here at uh, Bath High School running this event and making sure that the sky looks beautiful also. That's Good right. Good job. Good job, Ryan Shadowald, of, of ordering a beautiful sky. Well, as possibly predicted based off of the seed times coming around here nearing the end of the first lap, that's Corinne Clausen of Ottawa Glandorf is our leader. And Anna Buttlemeyer, her teammate, right behind her. The Van Wert runner is right behind them. 
That's Kara Welch from Van Wert hanging out in third place and hanging out not too far away and shouting distance in fourth place is Molly Stump. You remember earlier today, Stump had a race uh, where she kind of hung out, hung out, and then was able to steal it at the end with a great burst on the last straightaway. Well, we're seeing that happening right now with Van Wert. We're getting a burst here on the straightaway, challenging the leader there. That's the Van Wert runner, Welch, now moving her way into the top position. She comes in with a 232.97, and she's racing against runners who have dropped below that 30-second mark, which is really a thing for an 800 runner. You want to get below that 230 mark. And she is now moving her way strongly into the first-place spot. A great job by Welch getting to the inside before the turn. That way she didn't have to keep drifting outside. Now we got the final straightaway. Let's take a look and see what we're gonna get from Corinne Clausen of Ottawa Glandorf. She also has her own plan. You can see her there moving her way back into the top position. Ottawa Glandorf is gonna finish in first place. Clausen is your winner in this event. Now how impressive was Clausen though, having enough energy to get the lead back again. The last spurt by Clausen gets it done. Event 18, the boys 800 meter run. This is the second heat of two heats. These are your runners. In number one, in lane one, Aiden Wood of Kenton. Number two, Ethan Rawl of Kenton. Number three, Braden Buchanan of Bryan. Number four, Connor Rains of Bath. Number five, Jaden Ryan of Bath. Number six, Michael Kreitz of St. Mary's. Number seven, Mason Vogt of Ottawa Glandorf. Number eight, Gage Springer of Van Wert. Number nine, Rylan Miller of Van Wert. Number 10, Noah Williams of Shawnee. Number 11, Tyler Burt of St. Mary's. Number 12, Cash Shaddell of Wapakoneta. And number 13, Sam Durstein of Bluffton. Yeah, it's Durstein with the best time from Bluffton uh, Two. 02.40, but Jen, this is a real competitive race. We have uh, three other runners that are within two seconds of uh, Sam. This is going to be a lot of fun to see who separates early from the rest of the field. And Sam Durstein, who does come in with the fastest time, ended up getting that farthest lane. Not exactly the most uh, ideal place for a runner to start because you're way out there, way ahead, but he is a seasoned runner. He knows what he's doing, and I'm sure he has a plan formulated. Now Sam off to a good start. But as you pointed out, working from the far out spot, how is he going to plan the rest of the race from there? It'll be fun to find out. That's right. We got several guys that are already challenging for that leader point as they make their way around the third curve be interesting to see what comes of it as they move over into the first lane. Noah Williams from Shawnee, he's certainly one to keep an eye on. Much uh, success in the past in both the middle distance running and in cross country. And Mason Vod also from Otto Glandorf, 205 coming in and Jaden Ryan from Bath, another guy that should be competing. You know, it looks like the top four starting to separate themselves from the rest of the field. It's a good thing they turn the lights on here, Jen, as it gets <laughs> darker on that second turn. That's right. From my angle, way up here in the press box, it's difficult to see who that was over on that turn. Um, and and as, I, as I talk about this, I don't know that I see Sam Durstein from Bluffton out there. Um, it could be that he he is not running right now as these three guys make their way around the curve to get this final about 120 yet to go. That's Ottawa Glandorf in the lead. That's Mason Vogt. But Shawnee's Noah Williams kicking it in at the very end, and he is going to be your winner. Boy, the energy. How does he have enough? But he kicked it in to get that win. Great job by Williams.
Welcome back to the 2023 Bath High School Airsman Invitational here at Bath Stadium. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Miles Holiday, and it is time now for the girls' 200-meter dash. We are running under the lights at this point as it is well past. Let's see, 8.32 is the time here while we are doing this, and this is heat three of four. In lane one from Bluffton is Kendall Gieske. In lane two, Chloe Spisak, Spis Spisak from Bryan. Lane three, Olivia. Olivia Fenbert from Ottawa Glandorf, Lane 4, Emma Macon of Elida. Lane 5, Macy Johnson of Van Wert. Lane 6, Amelia Anchorman of St. Mary's. And Lane 7, Aubrey Frankhauser of LCC. Yeah, it's Emma Macon from Elida with the best time uh, coming in, but not by much. 27.12 going to be challenged by Macy Johnson of Van Wert. 27.43, but Jen, this part of the night, uh, it's anyone's race, really is one of those that you have to be mentally tough because the elements are a huge factor. I think we really need to watch Emma Macon and her time. This is the second to fastest heat, but she won the 100-meter dash earlier tonight with a time of 12.9. She is in lane four here in this heat. Yeah, Macon picking up some ground there. Have enough left, she does, now in first place. Heat four of four in the girls 200 meter dash. We had heats one through seven on our heat sheet, but it looks like we don't have that many in the starting blocks. We know we see Sophie Haug from Van Wert in one, Yol Yolanda Schenkel of Bryan in two, Alexa Fortman from Ottawa Glandorf in five, and Paige Olding from Walpock in seven. I think this is going to be a close one to the end, Miles. Take a look at this. And wow, Yelena, Yelena Schenkel. And she got it. Yeah, Schenkel gets a good battle by Hogan. and Fortman going to be a surprising third place. That's right. So missing a few people in this one, but it's Brian's Schenkel is your winner in this heat, an unofficial time of 26-27. Moving now to event 20, it's the boys 200 meter dash, and this is heat three of four. These are the names that we have on our roster, our heat sheet, though we're not sure that they are all scheduled to run or they're gonna run. Alex Ariolano from LCC in one, Alan Crew Allen of Wapak in two, Jackson Freisner of Allen East in three, Joel Stern of Shawnee in four, Ison Schaefer of Allen East in five, Keaton Lenhardt of Wapak in six, and Brady Hale of Bath in seven. And we don't have all of those guys, do we? Dude, this is gonna be close one to the end. That's a good battle at the end, and it looks like it's gonna be Allen East. Ison Schaefer. Schaefer, he's been running well all evening. Just a slim margin though. That was a close, close call. Yeah, it gets by Joel Stern of Shawnee by about a half a step. Heat four of four. In lane one, Elijah Jones of LCC. Lane two, Colton Hobson of Shawnee. Lane three, Jacob Hirschberger, Allen East. Lane four, Ryland Garza of Bryan. Lane five, Jagger Burgai of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane six, Kieran Johnson of Bath. And lane seven, Brody Devlin of Bryan. Uh, Jen, it's Hirschberger, Garza, and Burgai that are your best times in three, four, and five. But I would say this, don't sleep on uh, Brody Devlin in seven from Bryan. He's had himself a pretty good night. Hirschberger is off and going. Yeah, he had a great start. Johnson from Bath also looking strong. Oh, geez, Burgai, just like you predicted, but look at Shawnee as well. And it's Bath getting the win. Yeah, Johnson for Bath, the last 100 yards was impressive. Took a little bit of a spill as he finished, but it looks like he's going to be okay. That wraps it up for the 200 meter dash, an unofficial win time there of 22.66. Our sprints are done for now. We're gonna take a quick break and when we return, it's the girls 3200 meter run. You're watching the 2023 Bath High School Airsman Invitational on WOSN. 
Welcome back to the Airsman Invitational at Bath Stadium. You are watching it on WOSN. If you were supported nonprofit ministry, donate online at WTLW.com forward slash donate. It's time now for event 21. This is the girls 3200 meter run and these are your runners. Number one, Nicolette Stickney of Bryan. Number two, Ashley Elkins of Wapakoneta. Number three, Kyla Fallis of Bath. Number four, Cassie Weller of Paulding. Number five, Kate Thormeyer of Bryan. Number six, Madeline Hovis of Ottawa Glandorf. Number seven, Rhea Wennis of St. Mary's. Number eight, Alyssa Knittle of Van Wert. Number nine, Emily Durham of Elida. Number 10, Elena Williams of Shawnee. Number 11, Harmony Shureman of Van Wert. Number 12, Marielle Augsburger of Wapakoneta. Number 13, Kaylin Weisling of Bluffton. Number 14, Lauren Schlomer of St. Mary's. Number 15, Addie Manns of Kenton. And number 16, Aviana Schroeder of Ottawa Glandorf. We got music going, Miles. What a way to get things going for the 3200. Well, I'll definitely wake the kids up on the infield, doesn't it? <laughs> so we got dancing going on on the infield here as the 3200 runners are making their way around. And we've already got a leader there. Elena Williams from Shawnee. Hey, your best time coming in, uh, Kate uh, Thormeyer from Bryan at 12 flat. Some of the other good times, Addie Manns from Kenton at 12.15. Elena Williams, as you mentioned, from Shawnee, 12.36. And Emily Durham uh, from Elida at 12.32. And we've got some serious line dancing going on. <laughs> at about I, the I midfield. don't know that I've ever been to a meet where they are doing line dancing in the middle of, of the meet. Wow, this is a way to keep people going on the 3200 run, at least keep the excitement going. Well, a little behind the curtain for you folks, uh, Jen went and put a dime in the jukebox. Yeah, is that what happened? Before this race, wait, and, uh, wait, good selection. Miles, why aren't you down there dancing with the group? <laughs> exactly. Miles doesn't want to dance. No, you do look like you're, it's warm down there, so I might get down there and join them. All right. Well, looking in the backside there, you may be watching the dancers, but don't lose track of Elena Williams because she still is your leader here in the 3,200-meter run. A pretty strong lead. Take a look at that. Two Brian girls are behind her, and then we got a pack for fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Now, Nicholas Stickney. For Brian, also pushing to the top. You mentioned two Brian girls, uh, is uh, Stickney and uh, Thormeyer. Wow, it's pretty good dancers out there. They're not just good runners, but they're good dancers as well. Lena Williams making her way around again. As she may she's got six laps to go in this race. Brian's Kate Thormeyer is your second place runner right now. Nicolette Stickney currently in third, but challenging. That is Addie Manns of Kenton. And we are back. Elena Williams from Shawnee is still your leader, and she is almost to the two-lap mark. The music continues. The dancing is still going mid-infield. And Elena Williams has two laps to go in the 3200. It's the Macarena playing in the background, but I think it should be, hey, Elena Williams. There we go. All right. What a, what a creative thing to do in the 3200. I know as a long distance runner, I actually like hearing music when I run. So I don't know what these runners think about this, but certainly has added a new element to uh, this late night track meet. Well, before this, it was Cotton Eye Joe, the greatest country techno music song <laughs> combo ever created. Uh, Jenna went down there to dance, and I got tapped on the shoulder. Oh, they you said, did, huh? There is an age limit, sir. You're not allowed Miles, to I'm so sorry. He did just have a birthday the other day, by the way. Happy birthday late to our great Miles Halliday. All right, Elena Williams over there in the back stretch continues strong, a great stride, moving uh, with a great pace, getting probably ready to lap another runner as she edges her way closer to winning this event. Now, Jen, earlier tonight you mentioned how important cross country is for distance runners in the spring. And case in point, Elena Williams, a great cross country runner, doing a great job here tonight. That's right. She is moving her way back onto this straightaway here and just about has one lap to go. So she is almost to 400. Your second place runner is Thormeyer from Bryan. Kate Thormeyer from Bryan is currently in second place. 
Bell is wrong. The gun is shot, and that is for Elena Williams, who is your winner's leader. Leader, rather. She has 400 to go. A little bit less than that. Thor Meyer from Bryan is your second place runner at the moment. Yeah, it's Eddie Manns from Kenton in third place as well. Ottawa Glandorf sneaking up there as well. Madeline Hovis, you certainly never want to count her out. A very strong runner as well. She is currently in fourth. All these ladies now in their final lap. It'll be a good battle between the Hovis and Mans, I believe. And Mans, yeah. yeah. Mans to see who gets that third place finish. And look at Elena Williams, who is not slowing down, even though she is running well away from the pack. Less than 200 to go here in this 3,200 meter race. But she's been impressive, has not slowed down at all on that last lap. Oh, now the dancers are making their way over to the edge so they can become cheerleaders here in this final lap as Shawnee's Elena Williams moves her way into the less than 100 to go. Still strong, still moving uh, with great pace, making her way to the finish line. Such mental toughness to fight through the elements and the grueling nature of this race. Very impressive, elite level stuff by Elena Williams. Here comes Kate Thormeyer from Bryan. She has that number five on her hip and she is gonna finish in second place in this race. And it's gonna be a battle here for third place. Ottawa Glandor's Hovis just now passed Addie Manns of Kenton. Hovis in third, Manns in fourth. Jumping right into the boys 3200 meter run. This is event 22. We've got 16 on our roster here to be running. Number one, Jacob Weyerman of Bath. Number two, Landon Jones of Bath. Number three, Cooper Fisher, Ottawa Glandorf. Number four, Axon Fosna Wapakoneta. Number five, Owen Scott of Van Wert. Number six, Andrew Lodick, Van Wert. Number seven, Tyler Wolf, Brian. Number eight, Carson Frost, Shawnee. Number nine, Charles McClure, Polding. Number 10, Cosimo Ditola. LCC, number 11, Aiden Gillespie, Wapakoneta, 12, Cully Thompson, Paulding, 13, Liam Jordan, Bluffton, 14, Tony Faust, Bryan, 15, Ty Rosengarten, Ottawa Glandorf, and 16, Landon Selhorst, Bluffton. Miles at 16 runners, but when we were counting before, we only counted 14, so just like we've been seeing in a few other races, may not have uh, may not have all our runners. But what we do have is your favorite, Ty, uh, Ty Rosengarten from Ottawa Glandorf. Best time coming in at 957.94. This guy's run quite a bit tonight. He ran the mile. He ran some relays. Uh, he has had quite a load of his running tonight. Well, he talked earlier about the importance of cross country at Bath. Uh, case in point right here, Jacob Weyerman and uh, Landon Jones, a 10 a 4 0. Those guys should be competing for the top spot as well. That's right. So as we make our way around in this first thing, looks like it's both of our OG runners that are our leaders right now. Uh, then we've got someone back there in third place in a big group for fourth and beyond. And I'm not sure what's going on in the infield right now, but there's stuff. <laughs> there's, they have turned this track meet into a, a fun social time. And Cooper Fisher for Ottawa Glandorf, one and two with Ty Rosengarten. And Jen, you gotta believe those two have run quite a bit with each other over the years. That's right, it definitely helps to have training partners as you move into the actual race. You know each other very well. You know what you can get from each other, you can gain from each other. And who wouldn't want to be training with someone like Ty Rosengarten, who is definitely proving himself to be quite a solid runner. Yeah, how do you improve? Well, you go against people that are better than you, right? Well, there we keep, go. Keep improving that way. Challenging yourself time and time again. You know, I kind of wonder what it's like for the runners. Well, we're up here in the press box. We have a light on, but every time they get to that back curve, first and second curve, it's kind of dark back there. Now, right now, you're looking at the back straightaway. You see the two OG runners that are in the lead. So we, I, what I'm talking about, we haven't gotten to yet, but... Um, Varying lighting spots here on the track. Well, maybe we get a, a, a lantern for them or a night light <laughs> over there. <laughs> maybe wear, uh, wear, wear one of those um, things on their head with the uh, 
the light on their head? Yeah, yeah, lantern. There we Actual go. Head lantern or something, or, or maybe some glow sticks out there. They're dancing on the infield earlier. Get some glow sticks out. Have ourselves a good time. All right, here we go, making their way around. Six laps to go. Rosengarten is still your leader. OG one two, and your third place right now. That's Fosna from Wapakoneta. Fourth place at the moment is Lodic from Van Wert. Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. That is a tight group, and that could be up for grabs. We've got six laps to go. We're going to be back in just a moment with the rest of this race. All right, we're back. It's almost to the end of this 3,200-meter run. When we left you, Ty Rosengarten was in the lead, and we come back, and it's the very same thing. He's got two laps to go, 800 meters left to go, and our next closest runner is your OG runner, the second one, but he's fallen back just a bit. Cooper Fisher still running very well, currently in the second place spot. I credit Cooper Fisher though, he, he pushed, pushed Rosengarten early in this race, but Rosengarten, his pace has just been tremendous. I need to, to correct that because actually it's Alex Axton Fosna who's in second place. So I apologize to you, uh, Wapak, for, for miscalling that because uh, through there's so many runners here. We've got lapped runners. We've got so many things taking place. But we've got OG1, we've got Wapak2, and we've got OG3. And here he comes. Take a look at Ty Rosengarten. He is just, he's had, I mean, he has not had a small load tonight. He has run a lot of meters and he still has the strength and he's going strong. He definitely had a plan coming into this race. He got out in front early and he has left nothing for chance. Tremendous run. All right, one lap to go. That's what he's got left. One lap to go. He's down to 400 left to go here. Second place runner right there. Number four on his on his thigh. That's Axton Fosna of Wapakoneta. He also has one lap left to go. It's a great time by Fosna coming into tonight, 11.27. So jumping up into second place, good improvement by Fosna. Your eyes are on Ty Rosengarten over there on the back stretch. Has not slowed down. Impressive considering he is running by himself. He's racing by himself. He could slow down if he really wanted to and still win. But yeah, he is pushing strong, likely going for that time and going to bring this one in strong. No, what they say, always run like someone is near you chasing you, and that's exactly what he's doing. <laughs> Those pink neon spikes are making their way toward the finish line. Ottawa Glander is going to gain some more points for their team in this meet. And Rosengarten is your winner. He is your first place finisher. Let's watch for our second place runner. And that's your Wapak runner, Fosna from Wapak. He is moving his way in strong as well. And we got some bath runners coming behind. Landon Jones and Jacob Wireman. Wow, so Wapak's getting second. Bath and bath, third and fourth is how we're gonna finish things out. Those two guys ran together, raced together, and finished together. That's yeah, interesting you say that, Jen, because coming in, identical times in this heat at 10-4-0, and they are virtually neck and neck as they finished up. All right, folks, that is the boys' 3,200-meter run. We only have two races left to go. Don't go away. Well, you can, like, get up for a moment, but just for a moment, because when we return, we'll have the girls' 4x400-meter relay and the boys' 400 4 by 400 meter relay at the 2023 Bath High School Airsman Invitational. You're watching it on WOSN. Well, we are rounding down this meet. It's time for event 23 of 24, the girls' 4 by 400 meter relay. You are watching the 46th annual Airsman Memorial Track and Field Invitational right here on WOSN. Thank you for your donations and sponsorships. Would you commit to a donation in any amount tonight? It's a great way to show your support for this meet and your support for local high school sports. Donate online at WTLW.com forward slash donate or call 419-339. 44 
44. The girls 4x400 meter relay, heat two of two. Lane one is Brian. Lane two, Bath. Lane three, Van Wert. Lane four, Ottawa Glandorf. Lane five, Wapakoneta. Lane six, Shawnee. And lane seven, Paulding. Yeah, Ottawa Glandorf is your favorite. Uh, lane four, 415.16 is their time, of course. Fortman will be the closer. Getting a great start by Olivia uh, Fenbert will be important to them. But listen to some of the anchors that are in this. Uh, you look at Brian in lane one. Ava Zimmerman, a tremendous runner. Uh, Se Sophie Hogue, Haug in, uh, Van from Van Wert. She'll be closing for them. Yeah, so many great runners. If this is a close race, the, the, the anchor might determine it. This that's be right, fun. that's right. Four by four is uh, always a fun race to watch since it can change so much based off of your runners. Here we are with your first runners still in their lanes, which they have to stay in their lanes here as they make their way around. Got to remember that it is a stagger as you're trying to figure out who is in the lead. We did have that stagger to start things out, but it looks like in three, it's Macy Johnson of Van Wert who is starting to make up her stagger right there on the curve as she makes her way into the straightaway she is going to be handing off to Kyra Welch who will be in the number two spot for Van Wert. As Johnson leading it and then Fenberg in second place. And that's Shawnee there in third with Braylon Murphy. Braylon Murphy's handing off to Jenna Stump and Ottawa Glandorf just handed off to Corinne Clausen. Olivia Fenbert, these girls have had a lot of running going on tonight. Even most recently in the 3200, we had girls running in that. So a lot of, uh, I think they're going to be tired tonight. Uh, take a look at Ottawa Glandorf, though. Coming out of the darkness, looks like they're going to take over the lead. That's right. Here we go. Leading now, that's Corinne Clausen moving into that first place spot. Van Wertz, Kyra Welch is in the second place spot. And third place at the moment, I think that is... Looks like Bath. I think that's Bath, yeah. Isabella Bartlett. This is impressive by Clausen because a, a little bit of a, a staggered exchange, not the best effort on the exchange, but she has just been impressive. The neon green. See Van Wert trying really hard to make her way closer, but OG still has the lead. Rose Turnwald now has the baton for Van Wert. It's Denisha Branson, so we're going to have Haug anchoring for Van Wert. We'll have Fortman anchoring for Ottawa Glandorf. Real important for Branson that they keep it close, give themselves a chance on the last lap. But look at Rose flying down the track. Rose Turnwald smelling so, so sweet as she's running down the back stretch. <laughs> oh, Miles. Miles always got something fun and loving to say about all of these things that we do. How That's do you right. know with a name like Rose, right? Rose Turnwald is turning her way closer to the end. She is now on the fourth turn and is extending that lead as Fortman is watching and getting ready to accept the baton. So Ottawa Glandorf is in the first place spot. Bath, uh, I'm sorry, Van Wert second. Bath is third. Shawnee is fourth. Brian is fifth. Fortman is off and running with that super power arms and leg movement that she's become so known for, powering her way around the track, making her way to the straightaway. Haug is behind her second place for Van Wert. Bath is in third place right now, and Shawnee is in fourth. The Jen Fortman, when she got the baton, so impressive. Right behind the scoreboard just exploded. And look at the giant lead that she has now over Sophie Hogue. Exploded is the right word. She just jumps out, takes off, moves forward, and knows exactly where she's headed as she makes her way here into the straightaway. And she is headed home to bring her team another first place finish. Yeah, Sophie Hogue running extremely well, but just too far of a distance. Fortman, impressive. Ottawa Glandorf finishes first place in the girls' 4x400. Four uh, second place, here comes Sophie Haug from Van Wert. 
Looks like Bass gonna come in third. It's Allison Brostrom is the anchor there. But watch Shawnee having Watkins. Oh, powering her way, trying to reach her. Bats gonna hold her off, Bath surge. Shawnee is fourth, Paulding in fifth, Brian in sixth. A great work by Watkins to make it close. And it's now time for the final race of the event. It's the boys four by 400 meter relay. The first heat just finished and now it's time for us to show you heat two of two. And here's who we have running. In lane one, it's Bath leading off with Samuel Burkholder. Lane two, Allen East leading off with Ison Schaefer. Lane three, Wapakoneta leading off with Crew Allen. Lane four, Mason Vote of Ottawa Glandorf is your leadoff runner. In lane five, Shawnee is starting Sean Alexander. Lane six, Van Wertz, Kelby Blythe. And lane seven, Justin Good from Bluffton. Well, to everybody's favorite race, Jen, the four <laughs> by four. It's four by four time. That's right, four by four. Four times around the track, four runners racing their way around the track against the other ones. And our top time coming in is OG with a 3.36.42 in lane four. The Shawnee should push them. They're at 3.39.95 and Wapakoneta at 340.08. And there's really no need to hold anything back. It's the last race this of the night. This is it, the last one. It is 9.44 p.m. here on this Monday, Thursday, Thursday night at Bath Stadium. The last race of the night, it's dark. The first and second curves are pretty dark, uh, but you got the the cheering squad running all over to cheer on the runners. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things uh, at a track meet, watching the infield as they run from sideline to sideline, cheering on the runners. All right, that's OG in lane four in the lead. There he is handing off to Eisen Mackey as he makes his way around. Second place, that's questionable. Those other handoffs were pretty close to each other. Uh, fantastic handoff hand for OG though. Wasted no time, very clean. OG moving his way over there into the first lane spot, chasing him down behind that. I believe that's Allen East, uh, Keaton Lehman in second place. You know, this race is still really, really close. When you see second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth place, how close they are to each other. Yeah, and we see a right change there. happening right now there with Van Wert. All right, OG just handed off to Ty Rosengarten. Just finished running, winning the 3200 not long ago, and now he is racing his way around the track. Allen East has Caleb Hopkins as their third runner and chasing him down right behind him. I think that's Van Wert with Ryland Miller. Yeah, Hopkins better get moving because he's going to lose second place in a minute. And it looks like Van Wert now in second place. OG still with a very strong lead, but second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, you know, really close there. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when we have these anchors take off and get going. How impressive is this young man for Ottawa Glandorf, though? Wow, look at his face. 3,200 he ran, 1,600 he ran. Now he's done with his 400 and he's taken off. He handed off to Dane Dooling. Van Wert in second place right now. That's Gage Springer, who is the anchor. And it's come down to the anchors here. Alan East is in third, but they are flying around the track. Hey, Jen, I just can't get over how impressive Ty Rosengarten is. <laughs> they were in the 32 not too long ago and then carried a third leg here. Take a look at what's going on here with Van Wert. That's Gage Springer chasing down Ottawa Glandorf's Dane Dooling, and I think he's going to get him here on the turn. Does he have enough left in the tank, though? Oh, my goodness. Take a look at what's happening there with Ottawa Glandorf holding off that winner or that, that second place runner, Dane Dooling. Shawnee now trying to push their way in. And OG does it. Unofficial time, 339.21. OG is your winner 
in this race. What a fun race. That was a great race. The intensity level was through the roof. What a fun way to end this neat meet in the evening. Thursday night meets, a rare night for an invitational. Good job to Ryan Shadowald and that entire crew for uh, making this meet happen. And that's it. Miles, that's the end of the race, and we are finished. Now, some impressive performances here tonight, and definitely look forward to a lot of these young men and ladies improving. I think we're going to see some names all the way make it to Columbus that we saw here today. That's right. Well, that will wrap it up for us here at the 46th Annual Airsman Memorial Track and Field Invitational at Bath Stadium for Jacob O'Neill. Our editor, Zach Keith, Miles Holiday, and myself, Jennifer Beck. I just want to say thank you for joining us for this great track and field event right here on WOSN.